Welcome to another episode of my Motor Town playthrough. Today we are back at the coal mine again. And this is because I wanted to try something out that I got a recommendation for. And also a few things around here changed and it's been kind of a big topic for me on the Discord recently. The thing is, I really used to love the whole Gwangjin coal run over here. And that's particularly due to the terrain in combination with this vehicle setup and the 15 tons of load. However, of course, with the 0.79 update, we are now loading stuff not by the ton anymore, but instead by cubic meters. And different cargos now have different densities, so we might end up with something that's heavier or lighter than before. And when it comes to the coal, it's very much on the lighter side. You can see it down here, 600 kilograms per cubic meter, and also the uh, the capacity for the trailer has been lowered, so it's now down to 10 kiloliters or 10 cubic meters, it's the same at the end of the day, instead of 15. So instead of 15 tons, we are now loading only 6 tons, and that means, in my opinion, this entire area has become very boring to use for the coal run. Some people like it because they thought it was too difficult beforehand. I would say that they, I mean, first up, coal isn't really used for anything apart from making money right now, so no real requirement to use it for anything. But even then, um, there's still the Tlemusi dump, or the Jadumpi as I like to call it. And yeah, that's gonna be even better now since the higher capacity vehicles now have a lower capacity and therefore the difference isn't even that much anymore. I actually still have to check back on the Limousi dump in order to see if it's actually still uh, 6 cubic meters. But yeah, we are going to load this up and we are going to try something special because we are not going to go through um, this route over here. But instead, and this has been a suggestion by North Hopper on the T... Uh, not the TWL, the Motor Town Discord. We are going to take the regular route down the mountain over here, and then we are actually going towards Gwangjin and using the new mud road right here for yeah, seeing if this is maybe a bit more tough. And I kind of already know what it is because I've tried this before to check if it's even remotely possible, and thankfully, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to run into another problem with um yeah, just doing the whole thing or attempting something and halfway through I notice it's not possible and I just waste everybody's time. <laughs> also, when I um, wanted to play, this was the only thing that came to my mind, trying this out already. And I just didn't really want to record it. It was a bit too early in the morning. So we'll have to see how it all goes um, when it's fine, when it's not actually daytime. <coughs> the thing is, I tried the first time around doing the nighttime, and yeah, if you don't really know what's going on, it doesn't really help if it's fully in the dark. There are a few spots where I needed to actually winch, and I'm gonna see if that's still necessary here. It might actually not be. But yeah, the first part here, just going back down to the construction site, it should be a cakewalk at this point. Again, I'm used to doing this with 15 ton loads, and we're now down to 6, so barely more than a third of the original one. Usually this was the first place where I needed the winch beforehand, because yeah, there was no way of getting up here, no matter how much run up you had. But now the main challenge here is finding the right gear to maybe not even need to shift down. I think if I ever want to attempt that challenge, I would go with fifth gear. That should be alright. But yeah, a lot of the areas that used to be a problem, it almost feels like I'm running the whole thing empty. Because whatever I need the truck to do, it just does it. 
Especially if you have a bit of run up and if you know the terrain already. And yeah, I made a whole suggestion thread about um, this whole thing on Discord where I basically... Well, there are a few ways to change this back to what it was and it all has to do with um, how heavy the load is that you are carrying. I know that um, the 10 kiloliters uh, capacity for the trucks right now and it's the same for the dumpy. It works a lot better for the other cargo, so increasing the capacity isn't really an option, I would say. But there are a few others. Of course, the um, densities for the um, different cargos have been chosen to be realistic. The easiest way uh, would be just going back on that and instead of having uh, 600 kg per cubic meter density for this cargo, going up to 1.5 tons, so that would be straight up back to 15 tons overall. But I suspect the devs don't want to do something this unrealistic. So my next suggestion would be changing the mine up into uh, mining something different. A type of cargo that would actually be in the density range of 1.5 ton per cubic meter. And the thing that I found for that would be raw iron. Or just iron ore, I mean. And yeah, that kind of was my suggestion for the entire thing. In the end, as long as we only sell the stuff to the harbors, it doesn't really matter what we are transporting to begin with. As long as it's something that can realistically be loaded onto a dump trailer. And uh, can be mined out and that kind of stuff. So... Iron ore would be working pretty well for that. It's actually a density range, likely depending on how large the, um, uh, the different particles are and all of that. And it starts at 1.6 tons, but I mean, a bit of rounding and you get to 1.5 if 16 tons in total would be too heavy for this um, truck here. But yeah, that would be my idea, but I've seen a fair bit of criticism from other people on the Discord and I mean that's fair enough. First up there is the crowd that didn't really like the challenge here and I mean apart from not needing to do it right now and I guess that would be changing in the future I think that whatever we mine here it should be part of a supply chain at some point. And again the Jamusi dump should be alright for that. Especially right now, since the difference isn't quite as big anymore. And yeah, that should give you pretty much the same experience as this, right, as this is right now. Apart from it being a one um, rigid truck instead of semi-truck and trailer thing. And also there's of course still the dumpy. Which, I mean, when it comes to difficulty... The semi and uh, trailer is the hardest one that you can have. The dumpy is more like a middle one where you don't really need to ever use the winch or anything. But it is quite tough. You need a good setup and all of that. Jesus Christ, what was that? And the, um, uh, the, the dumpy is basically the easiest thing by far. But yeah, if people want to use this truck right here and still have an easy time, I don't know. <laughs> there are other cargos where you can have that. But yeah, people have been also suggesting I just wait and hope that eventually we'll get another one of these mining setups that does the f same thing that this one used to do. The thing is, I mean... I can see them maybe adding something like that later, that's just as good as what this war, uh, used to be, but that's first up a question of if, and secondly a question of when, and I just wish we got back what we had before because I think it was really good. And yeah, some people also think that changing over the mine into now delivering iron ore would be a bit of a drastic change. 
and I don't really know about that, to be honest. And that's more down to us really not using coal right now for anything but uh, making money, so it doesn't really matter much uh, what, we, what it is we are transporting. But, I don't know. Up to them, I guess, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, it's a bit weird changing it over from a coal mine to an iron mine all of a sudden, but it would work. It would still keep the realism part. But yeah, ideally, if possible, I think the easier change uh, would be suspending your disbelief and just making the coal heavier. And honestly, just thinking about it, I would have never expected coal to float in water. But apparently it is lower density than water, so that's what it does. Yeah. Bit weird, I always thought it would be heavier. Ah, I'm <laughs> gonna be a bit careful here. So the terrain is definitely a bit tougher, the roads are a bit more narrow and... Um, yeah, this is definitely a rougher ride than what you have on the coal mine run. And I think we are going to come up to our first real hurdle here. Again, I've done this at night. I haven't really done this that well and this is only my second run. So I'm gonna try being a bit more clever about this and the first thing we need to do here is just get the maximum speed up here because we might be getting stuck up on this thing. And yeah, we might actually still need the winch up here. Or maybe even not. Again, at night I kinda got stuck here, but I couldn't also really see what I was doing, but I definitely wasn't uh, getting up here, so this is nice. And yeah, I heard the argument from people who bought the JSMI and uh, Trailer tried doing the coal run and were surprised that they were expected to be using the winch. And I kind of get it because the, yeah, the JSMI is still a Jimusi and Jimusis are pretty much the top dog when it comes to off-roading in this game. So it's a bit weird, but when you think about it, a lot of the load is not on uh, your actual truck, but actually on the trailer wheels, and those are not driven, and therefore they are not going to help you out that much. So logically, and yeah, you need to think about it a bit, but really the um, semi is just not gonna be as good as a rigid truck with all the wheels driven and everything. But yeah, people have expectations in the, um, in the semi, even if they might be a bit unrealistic. And honestly, I've really grown to enjoy this thing, partially because of its shortcomings. So yeah, I would still like to preserve the challenge that uh, we used to have. I think the devs have also put quite a bit of work into getting that um, to the point where it was, including slightly um, nerfing a few of the parts again, just making it a bit less steep at points so that we could actually still do it. And yeah, I would like to see that part coming back. Again, it could be also in form of uh, us getting a different run in order to make that work, but yeah, I don't know. Another suggestion was adding a separate um, iron ore mine to the same mountain and everything. But in the long run, if we are really talking about some industry chains and us needing to do both deliveries, then I think just having something separate for each mine would be better to have more variety. Otherwise, you're just doing the same job multiple times and yeah, one time it's just gonna be maybe boringly easy for some people. 
<clears throat> but yeah, this is the um, turn off point here. Where we need to go on to the um, new path and see how well that goes. So we already went past one point where I needed to use the winch before and that went pretty well. There was another one on this entire trail and we're gonna have to see how that one goes. That's gonna be an uphill mud section and that's gonna be a bit of a killer. A lot. <laughs> yeah, I should have maybe been a bit more gentle on the brakes there. But let's see how well I can pull through here. <coughs> Again, the good thing about this road is that it's partially mud and partially regular dirt road. So you're not gonna be just uh, completely slugging through the entire thing, but it is somewhat of a challenge. And I think down there, that's the part where I need my speed uh, to be quite far up, otherwise I'm not gonna make that uh, crest there. And I think this might be a place where I'm gonna get stuck anyways, because, yeah, it's... It's just a lot in terms of slowdown. I still made it up a bit further than before. And maybe I could have also just taken... Yeah, some of the, um, of the way around here. I think that might be the more sensible idea, but, yeah, staying on the path... You are most likely gonna get stuck here, so let's get the winch hook, pull it as far as possible, and then let's see if I can get myself out of this situation here. And the thing about um, the, the mud here, I didn't really want to do that even, I don't really need my engine. It does nothing. So instead of doing like both uh, pulling with a winch and also trying to push with engine power, I can just do this because even if I now start the engine and try uh, helping out, it's not gonna do anything. I tried this on the other mud road before and I just came to the conclusion that it's a bit better to save your fuel just let it roll and let the winch do its thing. I mean, this is an 8-ton winch, if I remember correctly, so it can pull more than just the load from the trailer and, I mean, vertically. But yeah, we might be good to go here. Okay, yeah, the thing is moving on its own again, so let's just... Cut the cable. And get going. Also, this is now a real good reason to even use this mud road, in my opinion. So, yeah, that's quite a nice addition. I don't know if it would be possible using the same with a 15-ton load. It would definitely be much more difficult, but then again... I mean, there really was the difficulty in all of this. Wasn't all that much. Okay, there's another mud part coming up. I'm gonna go for a bit of wall riding in an attempt to just keep my speed up and <laughs> yeah, see if we can just slide over here. That's looking pretty good. But yeah, I think this road overall isn't even quite as bad as the other one. I think they should maybe still go back to the other one and swap out some of the parts for the um, a bit more forgiving type of mud. <coughs> because I don't think anybody is really using it. There might be a few people. I don't want to deny their existence or anything, but... The majority of people that I talk to, they always say that road is just not anything they want to use. Even if it is faster for some deliveries, it's just not fun. 
anyways, as I mentioned, I got something prepared for you guys. We are doing the whole cooking show thing here. And for that, we are going to leave the trailer behind over here. I don't think anybody is going to steal it, at least hopefully not. <coughs> and yeah, we're just gonna move ahead into the logging yard where we can find a few of my other vehicles. First up, I finally took my jet tanky and gave it a proper um, decal setup. Not really much on the front, just a few lights here, but. I darkened down a few of the, of the tanker parts to make it look a bit better. I think a two-tone uh, style thing is actually quite uh, nice for this. And I added the same kind of warning sign that I have on my 40-ton tanker. So we now have this stuff going on and I think it's just looking a lot nicer. I don't know if I even need to open the door for anything. I mean, I can... Okay, that's just another fuel pump for some reason. Oh, I can give people access right and uh, set the price here. Hmm, nice. I've never really used it. I'm also curious if I can actually teleport this with um, parking lots now, or if that means that I will get rid of my uh, tanker load. Would be nice if I could still keep that because I don't really want to drive it everywhere. But hey, cool that I finally get to actually use this thing. Um, the thing is, I paid for the fuel at the gas station. So why did I now pay for it again? Ah, okay. So I'm getting the money back for myself, at least I'm not paying it into the EFA or something. So that's cool. But yeah, that had me confused for a moment. Anyways, I'm gonna keep the truck around, but we are going to take... I mean the tanker truck. <clears throat> we are going to take the semi here and that's gonna be for the second leg of the journey. Of course now with um, lower weight we can actually do this a bit quicker even. I like how the guy at the um, uh, bus station is just looking at my... Uh, the bus stop is just looking at my truck over time, <laughs> or the trailer. Might have taken a few um, kilos for himself. Could maybe use it for a barbecue, who knows. <coughs> I really don't know what it is with my throat these days. I seem to be having like um, no problems for 10 minutes and of course I'm trying to clear my throat at the um, beginning of a recording session and between episodes and everything, but uh, I don't know. Maybe I need some medication. Or I just need for to wait for winter. That's usually more my uh, season. Three hundred We are really getting up there with um, those uh, ghosts and everything. And yeah, I've also switched up my approach for the um, AI truck uh, stuff. So that guy is now actually doing a lap around uh, Jeju Island. Starting at the um, overseas import uh, company to pick up a container. Then does a lap around uh, the Olle Ring and just... <laughs> at some point doing that there must be some business that's gonna take the container. And it's gonna bring like, the empty one after the full round back to the overseas uh, shipping company and then yeah, pick up another one, rinse and repeat. 
It's really not efficient, but I think it's gonna be better than what I had before. Because that was really not working. But I don't know. I feel like we need more controls. Like an option for the guy to wait at um, a shipping area to pick up the stuff for the next stop. I mean for pallets and all of that, this might work out pretty well if you just let him go from one to the other. It's gonna be carrying something at some point and maybe picking up more if there's space and that kind of stuff. But for containers you really want them to go to the next location and yeah, do something there. Or have something to be deliver delivered for that. Maybe as an option, I don't know. With buses I feel like it's a bit more clear what the um, um, thing is gonna do. Because it's either gonna stop at uh, stop to let somebody out, let somebody on, or it's just not gonna. That's really all the options. There are of course some limitations with um, where each pas passenger wants to go, but from what I've seen we can now actually see all the um, different locations they want to go to. Used to be always two and that's a bit weird because you should have the nearby terminal to the starting position, then a terminal near the um, destination and then of course the destination itself. And usually with how it used to work before this update, it was only ever um, uh, the destination close to the starting position and then also the um, final destination at the beginning. And you would only get the, um, term uh, the terminal close to the um, final destination if you brought them over to their um, starting terminal and that kind of stuff. I don't know if the passengers have priority for any of these things over the others right now, but even as it is right now, it's definitely helping out a bit. The only problem is that for some reason that, um, that little update there broke the ability to get money for the distance. So yeah, I'm better off just letting the stuff run with my AI company right now instead of jumping into a bus and getting involved myself because the money isn't good right now. I tried a Gwangjin to Geparan and it gave me like 5000 plus um, yeah, some of the other stuff like a comfort on time bonus that kind of thing. So it was maybe around 10k overall and that's really nothing compared to the usual 100k. Which feels both like stupidly much, but then again, considering the effort, I think it's somewhat justified. Because that's a half hour bus ride and it's quite the rough one. And yeah, I mean, I I don't know if there's any larger bus than the Bongo or Tawny that can actually do it. Really, I should be trying out the Tawny at some point because... Well, the Tawny can still have a winch, so I could adjust the route to go through the shortcut as well. That's not gonna work out with um, the Bongo. I think I tried that already. You can kinda just try and go past some of the mud areas, but through the mud it's really not possible. So yeah, maybe, maybe I should write up a little thing about the bongo getting the um, ever winch op option as well. It's kind of necessary. And it feels weird having uh, one bus have it and the other one just doesn't get it. But ideally at this point I would really like to have an off-road ready bus 4x4 with slightly higher capacity. Or if we finally got the um, all-wheel drive conversion upgrade, which has been on the Trello for months if not years now. But yeah, making that thing all-wheel drive would be amazing. 
Uh, you know, I mean, there is, there is still that weird little vehicle that could be used as a bus if only it got the bus license, which is already all-wheel drive. I mean, of course, talking about the Muran. But no, apparently that's not ever gonna get it. And therefore I'm not ever gonna shut up the, shut up about it. I think it even has the same capacity as the Bongo. But maybe one more comfort and for the price I think that's kinda justified. I might have to raise that um, point again. Also of course the Muhan has a winch if needed. I don't think it would need it, but it has one anyways. I just like how the, um, how the trailer is just moving left and right there, like a pendulum. But yeah, this thing is now very easy going. I mean, it's... It has the same power as the Dumpy, and even with a heavier load it isn't anywhere near as top heavy, so of course this is gonna be just easy. And it's another reason why I love those uh, smaller trailers, because they work so incredibly well with um, vehicles like that. Also, after all this time, I've really grown to like parts of the whole Gwangjin uh, setup. I've been doing the... Um, I'm just gonna go here, otherwise I'll tip over the trailer. If I try to um, stay on that uh, band. I've been doing those um, bus deliveries from Gwangjin to Gepa quite a few times now. It's pretty fun. Bit rough around the edges, but I overall pretty much, yeah, I really like it. I just wish there were maybe a few other things we could do there, like having a little restaurant to do some first up food deliveries to the restaurant and then also bringing stuff around uh, Gwangjin town with a delivery vehicle. And then maybe also some other deliveries like that. I mean, the semi-container deliveries, anyone? <laughs> that might be uh, interesting. Also, since I'm already... Uh, since I've just been seeing that police vehicle there, um, there has been a bit of talk about the replacement stuff. Not in terms of how they could be doing things differently than what we are doing right now, but yeah, there's a secondary vehicle being worked on f uh, to replace the police interceptor, being based on the actual um, Dutch uh, Monaco. So that's a vehicle that would be much closer in body style and overall looks to the current interceptor. I still quite like the um, uh, the nuke for what it is, it's based on the diplomat, or the Dutch diplomat I should say. So that's a more boxy vehicle from the early 80s or mid 80s or something. But yeah, I think the, um, uh, the Monaco would be a bit more on, a bit more of the stuff that I would enjoy. I don't know, the, um, the nuke is a bit more just looking like a boxy sedan and the Interceptor and the Monaco it's based on that's looking more like a four-door muscle car so a bit more sporty and all of that but I also made a suggestion on the Discord that maybe we should get uh, the Nuke as a taxi as like one of those default taxi options because it really seems to be predestined for that. <laughs> wow, that made the ghost really jump there. Police, ra police right on the case of those things.
Well, still 11 kilometers to go. This is, I mean, it's always the furthest uh, journey that you can take here. I hope we'll get something else to do in that area sooner or later. Maybe a town, maybe some properties to buy. I get that they want people to actually have to travel there, but I mean, come on. What I'd really like to have there is just something more to do. And I mean, as far as the journey is concerned, as long as they have parking lots there and they kind of need them to be there. Well, you're gonna buy a campy sooner or later, you're gonna put it down there and then what's the difference between just having a property there that might be costing more than the campy? But yeah, we just need more uh, properties around the place. I would also like something purchasable at Bai Yang. And the Bai Yang area I think should really um, be built up a little bit more. If we don't get any uh, repair garages down here in Southern OG, maybe at least one at Bai Yang. I mean, we have a gas station there already, we have a warehouse. What else could they do? I would just like to see maybe something more. Just like an outpost hut with a, or hub with a few things. And yeah, I think still the ideal way of um, improving the whole thing here, just making everything a bit more accessible over time. Just add a few properties and then give us the option at some point to build up our own uh, repair garages, our own gas stations. So that it's really up to the player to improve um, the infrastructure on this place. Make everything more accessible. Also dealerships, warehouse, that kind of thing could also be player owned businesses and player run businesses in particular. And I think they've been working on that in the background at least at some point with some new garages that have been added temporarily by accident. But who knows what they have planned. If the features aren't ready then I can see why they wouldn't um, just make those available right, right away but instead wait until the functionality is fully there. But I hope they get to that. I think that would be another big update and it would be a huge step forward. Just gonna have to wait and see. Always felt a bit spicy. I think that's also something that the game is doing really well. You feel most of the time when you are about to tip over. Uh, like that. So it's not impossible to um, course correct. You're just gonna pay enough attention to the thing to begin with and if you don't then you are kinda uh, lost. Also uh, when it comes to reduced uh, challenge with the new update Fuel has also gotten a bit lighter, so 40 ton tanker trailers don't really tip over that often anymore and I think that might be for the better. I never really enjoyed that part of um, the game. I mean the whole fuel deliveries from this place or oil for that matter. So I'm fine with that. But yeah, I get that other people might be feeling the same way about that as I do about the whole um, coal plant and everything, or coal uh, mine and the journey from there. Then again for some stuff you actually need the oil for plastic and all of that so it's not quite as optional. I mean then again you have so many different industry chains and all of that in this game. What really is required of you to do? There are so many choices. It really just depends on which one you choose to stick with in the long run. 
<clears throat> and by the way, just so you know, just because we recently got an amazing 20 cubic meter, um, oh god, 20 cubic meter tanker truck, doesn't mean I'm not gonna be, um, just keep on bitching about getting maybe a 15 cubic meter tanker trailer for the short version and maybe like 25, 30 for the long uh, one. I mean the long one, yeah, with the change to weight and all of that, not really that um, required anymore. The 40 cubic meter trailer is definitely not as painful to use anymore, at least not for that kind of thing. But yeah, more options, more better. Oh god, it got caught between the wheels. Oh no. Oh god. Ooh. For a moment I thought I was done for and that the entire thing would be now uh, flipping over. By the way, I'm recording this on the same day as the racing event. Honestly, I feel like I got too many episodes recently. I really have to take care of getting all of those out at some point. There's still also quite a few uh, for the no TP playthrough and yeah, I'm of course going back to that at some point once everything about this update has been um, done and dealt with. But we'll have to see about that. I may actually have to go back and renumber them because <laughs> yeah, right now I've kind of made the mistake and continue the numbering for these episodes as I had before. Or as I should have done with um, only the ones that aren't public yet. So I basically took the number of the last one that I published and then just added uh, to it. While there are already like two or three, uh, maybe four episodes even that already had those numbers. But I'll have to resolve that out at some point. I guess at this point I'll just keep making um, these ones here on my main character. And... Once I'm done with this and go back, then I'm gonna be renumbering the um, no TP playthrough ones in order to make sense and all of that. Also, considering that the last episode on the new TP one that I uh, published was the one with the whole uh, weird toe tucking thing, and there's basically another one or two where I try to sort this out. I mean, I know the next one is going to be a bit painful because I try to go back and fix some of the stuff, try to take care of the truck that I left behind and that doesn't work. And then maybe another two episodes after that, when I, after I've done something else for a while, I go back and finally fully take care of it. That's no problem anymore at that point, but until then it's going to be um, not that great. But hey, we just made a decent amount of money, which I was definitely needing. I mean, I might actually buy a few more trucks for the AI. I kind of want my Golima uh, back and also the um, container trailer for personal use. So I might actually have to take care of that and then see that I get something else for those AI drivers. Right now I'm only using one anyways and I don't think it's making me any money to begin with. Um, nope. I mean at least... Um, uh, at least it's not too bad. It could be much worse. But yeah, it's also not profitable. I don't mind too much. The main thing is that it does the whole container thing and delivers some stuff and later down the line I can reap the rewards when I go back to doing regular cargo runs. I've also been using the, um, uh, the Lobo and the Lobo van a bit more. It doesn't really feel like it makes much uh, sense for a lot of the stuff, but with some things like furniture and all of that, it's really good. But yeah, ultimately I wish we had more trailers for that, especially um, 60 feet container trailer. That would be really where it could shine, but yeah, it's not realistic and therefore 
it's not getting modeled and I think that's kind of a shame. Because that would be really useful. Other than that there are a few other concepts that have never been made and I don't care too much about those. That would be like a logging truck concept for likely also something uh, one and a half times the size of our largest trailer. I don't need we I don't think we definitely need that. It could be alright, but the container stuff. Yeah, that's something where I wish we could just have um the other one. Or give us a trailer that's uh, twice the length as our current one, so that would be um eighty foot. Or something and then make it so that we need uh, two lobos. One at the front, one at the back and then just tandem delivering that thing. <laughs> just for shits and giggles really. Anyways, enough about silly suggestions. Let's end the episode here. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed and see you guys at the next one. Till then, have a good one and bye bye.